It was like overnight. My whole perspective of the whole world had changed. There had been recent news of, of, of this story that I'll tell you guys, of a university student who, during his freshest week, he was meeting the right people, he was, you know, talking to the right people, going to the right parties, um, studying well. He was starting to really feel settled at university. All of a sudden, as days and weeks went, his roommate said he seemed to just stay in his room. They never heard from him. He just used to stay in his room. This went on for days, two days, three days a week, two weeks. News came out that he had actually passed away two weeks ago. This then quickly found its way to social media in seconds, at the tip of people's fingers. People were talking about it, saying all sorts of things. People were criticizing his friends for not checking up on him. People were criticizing his family. People were criticizing the university for not providing better support. People were criticizing anything and everything. It almost seemed as if people were less interested in causing any sort of change or bringing about justice, but people were more interested in commentating. The reason, the reason I, I start with this story is because I, I do believe we see a common thread in all of our lives with the handling of this situation. It, it, when you think about that story, you realize that to, to everyone that was talking online, that was simply a moment, a trend for them. But for the, his family, that was a perfect, painful reality they will have to deal with for the rest of their life. How many situations in our family, in our work, in our university do we, do we lay our eyes upon while our hands are so silent about? How many issues do we talk about every single day that are simply a moment, a trend to us, but a painful reality to others? How many things are we so quick to comment about, but so slow to change? And, and, and just to be very clear, I'm not saying there's no space for, for talking about your opinions and, and commenting. I definitely think there is space for that. In fact, most change starts that way. It's just that we seem to stay there. And I have a hypothesis. You guys can tell me if you think I'm right. I, I, I think it's because of social media. I think we've, we've grown and, and moved into a culture in which we, we are more concerned to say in our opinions than doing anything to create real change. Society has become a commentator incubator. Right now, at the tip of everyone's fingers, you could tweet something about the world's biggest problems, but statistically, less than 1% of you here will do anything about it. Now, why does that have to be the case? So today, I, I, I want to talk to you guys about how to make real change. I want to talk to you guys about how you move from being a referee to being a reformer. So if you're wondering, where, where, where do I fit in? Am I a referee or reformer? Because that's usually the first thing people wonder in their heads. Let me, let me try to make that very clear for you. So referees. Referees, if you're a referee, you have a strong opinion about most things and almost everything, but, but you, you don't seem to do much about it. If you're a referee, you've identified three things in my talk that you would do differently. If you're a referee, you, 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 you would do everything differently if you were in my shoes. And in fact, you hate my shoes. <laughs> you spend lots of hours on social media, you love controversy, and your response to issues is rarely solutions, it's communicating the already existing problem that we've heard already. And if that's not you, and you're sure that's not you, I'm sure there's great reformers here, then you also have strong opinions. But your strong opinions lead to action. You get irritated when people simply focus on issues. You're, you're, referees, they're silenced one, that once their opinion is heard, but you, you're not silent until change is made. If you're a reformer, you're probably wondering, what is he going to say? I really want something he says to change my life. Um, and maybe you're in luck, but we, we will see. <laughs> but, but just to be very clear, I want to be very clear with you guys before I enter the main bulk of my talk. I, I am not necessarily presenting you guys a new idea. Um, when it comes to topics like this around making real change, most people say the same thing, just in different accents, intonation, languages, actions. People say a lot of the same things. But, but what I want to offer you guys today is two much more valuable things. One, I want to offer you my perspective based on my research and experience. But two, I want to offer you guys a challenge today. And the challenge is to move from being a commentator 
to being a change maker. To to not accept this challenge, just to be very clear, could be a personal injustice to yourself, but also a public injustice to those around you that you can make positive change toward. So so if you don't want this challenge, I I understand now's the time to go toilet or sleep, or, or if you're part of the team, switch off my mic. But for the rest of you, for the rest of you, I am going to continue into this talk. So one of the traits I've observed in over 100 successful worldwide change makers is they have a great understanding of self. They understand who they are. They understand why they do what they do. They understand what they believe. They have a set of values and visions, and they're consumed by it. I, I like to call it a reformist philosophy because it sounds nice and fancy, but, but the proper term for that, I, I think, is called a personal code. The greatest reformers have a personal code. To be very clear, you can't be a reformer if you yourself are reformed by society. You must stand out. And and when I say you have to have this personal code, I'm saying simply identify what's already in you. We We all already have a personal code. We just need to identify that. Because identifying that will help you and inform the places and spaces you choose to reform. Let, let, let me give you an example of this in my life. There was, there was a um, company in the same industry as uh, the social enterprise I lead, um, and we were entering a partnership potentially, and you know, they were sweet talking us, telling us that they love the business, that they will give us all the funding, you know, they're really talking to us nice. I, I love that at the moment. And something in me just couldn't get on board with them. And I didn't know where it was. Like, I just, I just couldn't, I wasn't really feeling what they were saying. I just, I just really couldn't feel it. It turned out two weeks later that they were actually trying to make us a subsidiary of their company and take over ours because they saw its potential. So I was really proud of myself. I said to one of my mentors that, you know, I followed my heart and look at how great my gut is. You know, I went with my gut. I was really pleased with myself. And then they replied this to me and it was, uh, I was kind of confused at the time, but it makes sense. They said to me, George, there's nothing special about your heart and there's nothing great about your gut and there's nothing in your gut except from last night's Nando's. That's what they replied to me. But what they were actually teaching me in that moment is that, I have a personal code. It was my personal code that was working at that moment. My set of foundational beliefs and values. So I want you guys to, to, I want that to be a step. Find your personal code. It will stop you from feeling unfulfilled. I I think we've all seen so many leaders who are unfulfilled because they don't know their why. So I want you guys to, to, to really search for that. The next trait that I've seen in over 100 worldwide change makers is that they have a great understanding of others. They have this understanding. They, they, they understand this one basic fact. Everything is made of people. Businesses are made of people. Your family is made of people. I hope you're a person. Like Everything is made of people. To change, this is what it means. It means change is derived from an understanding of people, and they get that. Not understanding people, but trying to make changes, like being a gardener, but not understanding plants, or, or, or being a doctor, but not understanding any, any, any anatomy. Surgery would be an absolute joke. It's, it's the same thing here. Make, trying to make change, but not understanding people, it just can't work. But that's what referees do. They only consider their perspective and try to make change through that. But that's why they stay as referees. Research by um, a a, a renowned um, psychologist, Daniel Goleman, actually shows that the greatest leader-follower dynamics are are not two brains reacting to each other like we usually assume, like that. It's not really that. What it is is that there's, there's a brain interconnectedness. There's this understanding of each other that makes them so intertwined and connected that, in fact, research shows that they almost show the same brain chemistry as each other. That is how you make change. You understand people to to a deep level. It's like, it's, it's not one person walking ahead and one person following. It's two people walking in sync. How can you influence people if you don't understand people? It's like two people being blindfolded and trying to follow each other. It doesn't make sense. So the, after this, after I say things like this, the, the, the most common question I get is, how can I understand people if, if, if everyone's so different? And the truth is, I agree. 
Everyone is so different. People are so fast changing. Like everything just changes all the time with people, right? And, and there's so many types of people. But what the greatest reformers understand is that there's similarities in all of us. In fact, psychology shows that, that we all, all have these 30 basic needs and motivations that we can be summarized into. This means that the moment I, I, I can look into myself and look at you and understand our similarities, I now have the tools that are required to make change. Now, let me give you guys a few stories um, of, of, of me doing this. So as part of the social enterprise, some of our work is to diversify the workplace. Um, and so I enter a lot of partnership meetings um, and identify that their basic needs are usually financial security, you know, attraction, and they want to have a sense of purpose. So I have two options here. I have one option, which is to enter the meeting and say, we're a social enterprise, um, you should partner with us for moral reasons, and end it there. Or I have this other reason that having a diverse workforce can increase your financial success from 20 to 35%, research shows, and, or, and, and that this will change the lives of the people if you partner with us. And also, having a diverse workforce attracts more diversity. Now, which reason are you more likely to go for? I, I think it's going to be the second, and it's not because you're a bad person, but because I've identified the basic needs. You can even look at this on a personal level, and think about that friend that, you know, you, you, you may have not have done something they said you should do. I, 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 I've done that many times, so I am speaking from experience here. You, you can do this. You can identify their basic needs of trust, belonging, and respect, which makes a massive change. Your response to them when, when, you've, when you've offended them and not done something they've said isn't simply, I'm sorry. Is I'm sorry. I undermine your trust, I do respect you, and I really want to remain your friend. On, on that relational level, you can already see the massive difference. You need to have a great understanding of others, you need to have a great understanding of yourself. But, but let, me, let me tell you one quick truth. Either in isolation aren't that powerful. Just understanding yourself leads to misguided efforts, and just understanding others leads to inauthentic efforts, because it's not coming from a place of truth. Th those two things aren't powerful in isolation. What is powerful is this. It's the overlap. The overlap is, is, is the most powerful tool, and what I see in all the change makers, that means that, that they are successful in every area they try to make change. Finding this overlap will inform the, the, the methods you use, it will inform the way you speak to people, and it, it, it will lead you to becoming that reformer rather than you staying as a referee. So now I'm going to show you where that overlap lies in my life. Um, we'll, we'll, so, so here's me as a child. I wanted to show you that because I think my fashion is incredible. Um, but, but, but let me tell you about me in maths class. So a few years ago, I was in maths, um, and, and I saw, like, reflecting on my life where I used the overlap. Um, so I was in maths class, I didn't bring my homework, my teacher wasn't happy, I'm sure we, a lot of us know that story, or maybe it's just me, in that case, that's all good. Um, but, but, but I didn't bring it. And I could have done what the kid last week did, who is he shouted out and he said, Miss, I haven't brought it, but please let me off. But what I did is I identified the overlap. I identified my basic needs, and I, I identified who, who my personal code, in thinking I didn't deserve it because I actually did it, but I forgot to bring it in. And I also identified hers, and I, I understood her. I understood that she needed, so she needed to know that I respected her and that she had an element of control. So I apologized. I said, I'm sorry, Miss Ward. You know, I, I do really respect you, um, and I'll make sure I have it back by 4.30. I'm so sorry this won't happen again. Five other people got a detention that day, and I didn't. I'm standing here. And, 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 that's, <laughs> and that's from identifying the overlap. That's me then. Look at me. Look at me now. I, I'm speaking here. Um, I'm the co-founder of the Black Excellence Network. Um, I, I, I sit on educational boards. I'm meeting the director of Office for Students on Monday. I, I, and this isn't through studying education reformation for 20 years. It's by identifying that overlap. Or think of, think of Joe and Stacy in the front row who, who, who have identified that there's a massive leadership problem in the world, but they take time out of their week to, to develop young leaders like me. They've identified that overlap. 
and you can too. Um, but the truth is you have everything you need to be a reformer, not a referee. You have everything you need to be a change maker, not a commentator. You have everything you need to be a leader and not someone who just looks. I just want you guys to think of the overlap. Think about what makes, what makes your heartbeat and their headache and find the overlap in that. There's thousands of problems out there, guys. What's that problem in your family, in your work situation, in your relationships? There's thousands out of problems out there. What's yours? Thank you guys so much for listening to me. I really, really do appreciate it. I hope that together we can dream of a world where there's no longer an all-time high of commentation and an all-time low of reformation, but an all-time high of reformation and an all-time low of commentation. Uh, a world in where broken relationship is restored, where divided society, a divided society is unified, where social justice is achieved and maintained. Starting from today, when all of you pick up this challenge, we can move in that direction. God bless you.